Good evening, I'm Patricia Vallone with a CTV News update. Some bad health news for Maryland. The state sets a record for new COVID-19 cases. The health department reports 1,869 cases today, an all-time daily high. 12 deaths were reported as well. The health department says nearly 1,000 people are currently hospitalized with the virus in Maryland. I'm going with the flow. I really am. I just to go with the flow. That's all. Whatever they ask, that's what I'll do. You know, that's the only only way we have out of this. Yes, there's COVID fatigue, but I mean, you have to do what you need to do to protect you and your family. So I just want the whole thing to be over with. So if I have to cover my face and shut down for a little bit, I'm fine with that. So I wear my mask wherever I go and just pretty much follow all the guidelines. I think if people follow it, the cases will go down. COVID fatigue at this point? Hmm? COVID fatigue, are you tired of it yet? Oh, I'm been sick of it. I'm ready for the kids to go back to school and everything. <laughs> Most of the COVID cases reported in Prince George's are in Hyattsville in communities with the zip code 20783. That zip code has more than 3,300 cases. Well, Governor Hogan announces $70 million in new investments to protect the health, safety, and well-being of Marylanders. The Federal CARES Act funding includes additional PPE, mass vaccination supplies, and unemployment insurance staffing, as well as money for rental assistance, foster care, and area food banks. The announcement comes on the heels of a Prince George's initiative to help area businesses. We are providing new resources to help restaurant owners uh, this winter through our Restaurant Resiliency Fund. Um, let me just say that our restaurants have just been so resilient and so wonderful, but they have really, really suffered. Um, and so during this time, we will be providing grants of up to $25,000 to Prince George's County-based restaurants and food establishments. Uh, businesses may use the grant uh, for COVID-related costs, including PPE, winterization for outdoor seating, interior improvements to support social distancing and others. And we are expanding also our successful COVID-19 hourly employee relief fund. Uh, so beginning November 11th, Employee Prince George's is now allowing uh, previous applicants to reapply if they remain unemployed. And we're increasing the visa gift card amount from $200 to $300. And this is again for our residents who have lost income uh, due to COVID. Businesses who hire unemployed Prince George's residents will be eligible for grants that supplement 50 to 90% of the employee's salary uh, during the agreed upon period. And grants will be provided to businesses on the employee's first day of the job. Meantime, Montgomery County began requiring restaurants earlier this week to collect information on indoor and outdoor diners to assist in contact tracing efforts. CTV asked also Brooks if Prince George's will be doing the same when it begins implementing tougher COVID-19 restrictions this Sunday. She said they hadn't considered doing that yet, but may look into it for the future. The state health department launches a new tool to help with COVID exposure notifications. It's called MD COVID Alert. Through Bluetooth technology by Google and Apple, smartphone users will receive notifications if they've possibly been exposed to someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. Apple users can go into set their settings to opt into receiving alerts. However, Android users will have to download the MD COVID Alert app. So far, more than 800,000 Marylanders have opted in. Once you have exposure notifications turned on, uh, along with your Bluetooth, you go about your day. The two phones that are in close proximity exchange random IDs that um, change every so often in order to preserve privacy. So these um, IDs are logged. And then if down the line, somebody enters a positive report of, of COVID-19 into the system, um, the technology will go back and look up all of the, the keys that were exchanged during that individual's infectious period when they might have been exposing others to COVID-19 and sends alerts to those phones to let them know of the possible exposure. Google and Apple provided the technology to the state for free.
Criminal and civil jury trials, trials in Maryland will be suspended once again due to the resurgence of coronavirus cases. Chief Judge Mary Ellen Barbara reimposed the limits at least through the end of the year, except for cases where a jury has already been impaneled. The order follows last month's resumption of jury trials after they were suspended in March due to the then emerging pandemic. The action comes a day after all in-court federal proceedings and hearings were suspended for at least two weeks at the Baltimore and Greenbelt courthouses. Residents came out to get tested for COVID-19 in Bowie this morning. The event took place at the Bowie Senior Center. Testing kits were available to anyone with or without symptoms. The County Health Department also provided free flu shots. Vaccinations were given to Prince George in six months and older. A fire breaks out at a buoy home early this morning. Crews arrived here at the 11,800 block of Blanding Court about 3.30 a.m. Officials say the fire began near an AC unit and spread to some parts of the basement. The fire caused more than $20,000 in damage. No injuries were reported. Tenants facing eviction could get more legal representation under a General Assembly proposal. The legislature is considering a bill that would increase funding for financially strapped tenants so that they have a right to counsel at their court hearings. Both judiciary committees are looking at measures that would fund the increase in part from landlord filing fees in eviction cases which are on the rise. A local group is teaming up with an NBA player to give away Thanksgiving meals. The Prince George's County Association of Realtors and the Lee Way Foundation, founded by NBA player Damian Lee, are distributing the meals tomorrow. Families will receive a turkey with all the trimmings just in time for the upcoming holiday. Due to COVID-19, it will be a drive-by event. Everyone has a, had a very, very challenging year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. and. We think it's very important to support the communities where we live, work, and play. It's important for the Leeway Foundation to partner with PG Car to give meals to food to families in need during this um, season. We know we're in a pandemic and it's hard for some people to be able to have the traditional Thanksgiving, so we want to help um, provide that for them. And the Thanksgiving drive-by starts tomorrow at 10 a.m., co-sponsored by Giant. It will take place at the 8300 block of Corporate Drive in Landover. As Americans begin their holiday shopping, it's important to keep in mind shipping de deadlines. The deadline for first class mail through the Postal Service is December 18th. If you would like to ship an item using priority mail, the deadline is December 19th. The final day to get cards and presents to loved ones before Christmas is December 23rd using priority mail express. A local author with ties to CTV has published her first book. Byron Scott has our story. It kind of just popped into my head and I was just like, oh, I should, I should start working on this. The book is called Giraffes Don't Talk to Ants. It's a story that takes place in South Africa. The author is former CTV intern Lauren Meredith Poteet. You read the, um, the title, it says Giraffes Don't Talk to Ants. And automatically people think that, you know, people who are up here don't talk to people who are down here, but the book is actually kind of quite the opposite. The book is a children's story about an ant who goes on the adventure of a lifetime when he decides to take a chance and do something different. It's really about life, essentially how life works and how um, you can feel like you, you don't measure up and um, ways to conquer and win. Poteet started working on the book in the spring, just as the pandemic was spreading. I was lying down just thinking about, you know, just life, because I had so much time on my hands because of the COVID. And I was like, I should do a children's book. Poteet, who self-published this, her first book, faced some challenges along the way. For me, the two biggest challenges that I faced were, because the book does rhyme, having it rhyme and still make sense at the same time, um, that's actually, it's a craft, it's an art. Um, so I had to really go back and just keep doing it that way to make sure that it flowed correctly. And then the second thing was nailing down a great illustrator. She found one in... Tosin Akinwande of Nigeria. They connected online. I feel like I'm actually in the book. Like this is, if I were a child and I saw these images, I, I'd want to be like in this book. I'd want to be a part of this book. And while Giraffes Don't Talk to Ants is clearly a children's book, Poteet says it's really for everyone. So I want people to actually read the book and, and get from it 
its real meaning and message, its purpose. And there are so many purposes, but if they can just read it and come away with at least one, they should come away with at least three. But they get at least one, I'll be satisfied. The book is available on Amazon and Kindle. Byron Scott, CTV News. Need a break from your kids or looking for child care in the afternoons? Joe's Movement Emporium still has several spots available in its after-school program called Club Joe's. It starts at 2 and runs until 6 p.m. Club Joe's is just for elementary school age children. Kids in the program participate in a variety of art activities from dance to drawing. We also have classes that incorporate jump rope and general physical fitness and then there's vocals, music, anything really in the performing arts. Um, several of our staff are multi-talented and so um, each day the students come in, they are split into three different groups. So each group has a teacher and that teacher does visual art and some sort of movement with them. And for more information or to enroll you can, your little one, you can visit joesmovement.org. A major breakthrough for women in professional sports. The Miami Marlins have hired Kim Ng as their new general manager. She's now the highest ranking woman in Major League Baseball. Ng has more than 20 years of experience in the major leagues. She previously worked for the White Sox, Dodgers, and the New York Yankees. She's believed to be the first woman to lead a men's team in a major professional sport in North America. And congratulations to her. The Washington football team will be in Detroit on Sunday as it begins the second half of the season. Quarterback Alex Smith will make his first start since November 18th, 2018. In that game, the 16-year veteran QB suffered a broken fibula and tibia in his right leg. It obviously, it's been a long time even just driving into work um, with that feeling, you know, obviously knowing that the ball's in your hands um, and preparing all week like that. Uh, you know, it, 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 it has been a while since I've had that feeling, obviously. So almost two years uh, to the week. When you have a guy like Alex who's played so much football, there's probably not too many looks that he hasn't seen. So uh, for young guys like myself, Cam, who are only in their first few years in the league, we got, we got a pretty young team, especially on offense. And that really helps us because he's prepared for those looks. He studied those looks in his game film, and he could kind of either give us tips on how what zone he's looking for, or if it's man, what he's looking for, and the way we come out of the angles of our route. So having a veteran guy like that, you know, you can't stress enough how important that is for a young group and the execution that goes into Sunday. He's getting all the snaps uh, with, the, with the first unit for the most part. So he's really getting into the, uh, the teeth of what we're doing, and we'll see how he reacts to it. But I believe he's going to react very well and go out and play well. I got the opportunity this week, and, and I'm going to make the most of it. That's my plan. I'm not, I'm not worried about anything else. I'm not worried about opinions here or there. I'm, I'm doing what I can to go out there and try and win a, win a football game. Washington kicks off the Detroit Lions at 1 p.m. And now let's get a quick check on our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, clear with a low around 39 degrees. Saturday, sunny with a high near 55 and a low of 41. Sunday, mostly cloudy with a chance of showers. Daytime temps will reach a high near 64 and a low around 41. Monday, sunny and cool with a high near 53 and a low of 37. And now for your community calendar, Reed Temple Christian Academy is currently accepting applications for pre-kindergarten students. The state-funded program expands access to early education for Maryland residents, as well as for families with low income and students with disabilities. Students must be three or four years old as of September 1st, 2020. The program is free and offered on a first-come, first-served basis. For more information, call 301 eight six zero six five seven one or send an email to info at readtempleacademy.com and that wraps up our ctv news update i'm patricia valone have a great evening
simple moments are what make every day count.